how do you get your Olympic shape? Well, this is Olympic shape. Now, this man is Edgar Zonderland. Netherlands has never won an Olympic medal in men's gymnastics, ever. This is his chance. Can he challenge Hamburger? He absolutely can, and I'll tell you why. We've seen a lot of gymnastics in London. He has the most difficult piece of gymnastics, men or women, in the games. It's just how well can he perform? Comes up right here. Three huge releases in a row. One. He's got it. Wow. Oh, crazy wild. Making it very interesting. This is my youngest brother, and he was in Olympic shape in London 2012. And a lot of people ask me, are you the brother of? When they hear my back name or they see something familiar. And then I say, I'm the brother of Johan and Geeske. But of course, they mean the brother of Epke, Golden Epke. But today, it's all about me. And what's my story? <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> it's all about me today. Uh, I'm one of the four, actually. I'm one of the four, the Sunderland Four. And we were known as the Sunderland Four in Lemmer, where we grew up. And the four kids who did gymnastics at the local gymnastics club in Lemmer. And that went well, and we were talented. And we were invited to go to Heer Veen. There was the training center of the northern part of the Netherlands. And we were able to train three or four or five times a week and getting better, getting better gymnast. Our sister Geeske quit early, but with the three brothers, we were developing and getting better and inspiring each other. And within a few years, we were one of the best gymnasts in the Netherlands of our age. And that was good, but we wanted to be the best of the world. So we weren't there yet. And we were training, and even in our holidays, this is in the back garden of our parents. In, in our holidays, we were doing gymnastics in, in the garden because we loved it, we liked it. And we were getting better. And you know, the, 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 the brother competition is a very healthy competition because you, you're challenging each other, and you're helping each other, and you're inspiring each other, and that's, that's very good. We, we were able to get everything out of us, and I inspired, inspired Epke, and Epke inspired me to get better. Well, as I said, we wanted to be the best in the world, and at a certain moment I thought, maybe the best in the world for her is a little bit too high ambition. So I had to reset my goals, reset my ambition, and I was a good gymnast, Good at six efforts, men's gymnastics, we have six efforts. I was not world class on one, but also not very bad on one. And I could perform when I had to perform. So I was, I was able to uh, perform under pressure. And that made me an important gymnast for the gymnastics team. And I wanted to be sustainable performing for the Dutch gymnastics team. And I did. In a, in a period of 10 years, I competed at seven European and five world championships. And when I look back, I think I have had my pen I reached my potential. I got everything out of it. I couldn't be any better than I was. So if we, if we look at the, the, the term Olympic shape, Epke was in Olympic shape in London. But I think I have my Olympic shape also for 10 years, not one time, for 10 years. I've had my Olympic shape. And that is putting Olympic shape in a different perspective. So Olympic shape is Olympic gold, of course. I think you agree. Uh, human potential. I think it's even more human potential, getting everything out of it. Find your talents, use, use your talents, and develop them. Olympic shape has something to do with sustainable performing, I think. And maybe, in a broader perspective, Olympic shape is just feeling good. Feeling good, so you can perform every time you want. And Olympic shape, what did I do as a gymnast for 15 years? I was preparing, and I, need, I needed some physical things. Of course, I needed some talent. I'm not that tall, so that helps me to being a good gymnast. That's the first one, that's talent, that's in me. But we have to train, and with gymnasts, we have to train a lot. We train 30 hours a week. And we, we ate and we drank very healthy, to have the energy, 
to train and to recover. And we slept eight hours during the night, even during the day sometimes. And we needed facilities, facilities to train and to develop our talents. We needed a good gymnastics hall. We had in here in Fane, and we needed a good high bar and a nice temperature of the gymnastics hall, 21 degrees or something. Good facilities to, be, to reach my Olympic shape. But the physical part is one, but the second one is also important, the mental skills. It's very important. To be in Olympic shape, you have to have some mental skills. In, in, in athletics, in, in uh, every top athlete have a clear goal, an ambition. And for Epic, it was Olympic gold. And for me, it was qualified for the world. And it was very clear. And then when you have a goal, you're able to, to focus and you, you concentr to concentrate and to put in the discipline whenever you have to, because it's not always fun. But when you have a goal, you want, you want to do something. Effort. And it's not always fun, but you have the discipline to, to make it, to make it happen. Winning mentality is also very important. The third part is also very important, is the emotional part. You have to be stable. It starts with a passion, doing something you like. You need a stable environment, some support from family, family, friends, trainers, coaches. Very important. And of course, you need some self-confidence to get in Olympic shape. And this is what I did as a gymnast. This was my profile as a gymnast, to get in Olympic shape. But if I turn a question around and I ask you, how do you get your Olympic shape? Look at this. I think you need this also, to get in Olympic shape. When you have to perform every day, when you score an A+, plus at the end of the day, even on the Friday, and you want to have some energy to do fun things in the weekend. I think you have to have a little bit of care of this. And I discovered this. When I quit gymnastics seven years ago in 2009, I thought, now it's going to happen. Now it's hammer time. It really felt like a mental relief. A gymnast, I was 24 7 I was a gymnast. Even at my day off, I was preparing for the day after because I had to train maximum again. So it felt really like a relief, yes. And I was, I was going to do normal things. I was going to be the normal citizen who was going on holidays, like everyone's doing, and doing fun things in the weekend, and city trips with my wife, and doing other sports. I love sports. And, of course, working full-time. And so I went full in it. And after a few months, I thought, whoa, this is heavy. <laughs> this is heavy. I thought I had, this, had a hard life as a gymnast. But now I know better. This is way harder to find a new balance in your life, to find new goals. I cannot do every, everything I want to do because there is no time or there is no energy. Or the, I, I cannot manage all expectations of people around me. So when I uh, want to perform, I start with the goal. What do you want? Why do you want it? And, and I discovered by myself, and it made me aware when you want to perform, when you want to um, develop, you still have to be in Olympic shape. And I'm not a spartanium gymnast on anymore, but I know how to push the buttons to get myself in Olympic shape. And I'm lucky, I have the experience as a, as a top athlete, how to get in Olympic shape. And I know and I be, I'm aware that I sometimes I have to be in Olympic shape also. And these insights are with everybody. So that's why I'm doing this kind of lectures and trainings in business to making people aware and inspire people. Take a little bit care of yourself, your body and your mind when you want to perform or you just want to have enough energy or you just want to feel good because that's Olympic shape in my opinion. Okay, this is me nowadays. Okay, um, the profile of the top athlete, my profile as a top athlete, how to get in Olympic shape and yours, how to get in Olympic shape. Uh, top athletes have to train 30 hours a week, train very hard, physical exercising. But physical exercising is also very good for us people, normal people, like we are. And I want to invite you, and if you're okay with it, I want to do a physical exercise with you now, here. All the 500 people here in Tear the Snake, do a physical exercise. So I will ask you to stand up, stand up, all of you. Yes, great. That's great to see. And we're going to do the squat. You know the squat? <laughs> yeah? I did, I did it yesterday in the gym, yeah? 
And in the gym, we put some kilos on the shoulders and we're going to up and down. But now, we're going to stay in the lower position. So we're going to squat and we're going to stay in this lower position. And then I'm going to ask you, what do you feel? What's happening? Okay? Three, two, one. Let's go. Oh, yes. That's nice to see. <laughs> Maybe it's a Guinness Book of Records uh, record. 500 people in the theater <laughs> doing a squad. Okay, what's happening? What's happening in your body? Pain. Yeah, muscle pain. I hear muscle pain here. The pressure on the legs. More? What's happening? Yeah, the heart rate is getting up. The heart rate is getting up. I see some sweaty foreheads here in the front rows. Yeah, they start to sweat a little bit. Yeah, what happens more? Yeah, shake, start to shake, it's painful. Can we hold this for 15 minutes? <laughs> no? Okay, then stand up, stand up. Okay, and notice how to feel, how you feel right now. You're feeling the energy stream through your body, right? That's because of the sugars in our blood, it has to go to the, to the legs because there's a lot of pressure on our legs. Our body helps us to perform. And did we talk about to-do lists and grocery lists and what should we eat this evening? No. So this is the first tip. When you sit all day like this, eight hours behind your laptop or in meetings, do a physical exercise every hour. Get out of a chair, do a physical exercise, feeling the blood streaming, the blood streaming through your body. Do, think about something else for one or two or three minutes, and then go on. This is en minutes energy during the day. Okay. What you also uh, felt, I think, was a little bit pain in your legs, right? The pressure, yeah. And if you hold it for a, l for a long time, um, we're damaging actually our muscles. And that's no problem when we stand up again, but because the beautiful part of our body is, it repairs itself, it repairs itself. So if I ask you again to sit in the squat position, let's do it again, yes? This feels better than when we quit one minute ago, right? Yeah, yeah you agree, okay. <laughs> this is the beautiful part of how our body works, yes? Okay, you can sit down in your chair again. Okay, this is what we have done. We put up the effort in our bodies here. We trained, like athletes do. And then we recovered. And then we did a, did a squat again, and now we're recovering again. Thank God we're recovering again. Okay, this was the graphic, which was very important for me as a gymnast. I was training, and I was recovering. And I, I, I asked myself not one or two times a day how I felt, no, 30 times. Neuro neurotic. In, in Holland we say cuckoo. You know? <laughs> Top sporters are a little bit cuckoo, a little bit neurotic. And I was asking myself 30 times a day, how do I feel? Can I train maximum or not? And how, di how did I get better? How did I get a, uh, uh, become a stronger gymnast? Pushing the boundaries. Train harder. Train harder. 80 kilos, 90 kilos. Train harder, right? And the, what happens on the upper side? You train harder. We have to recover harder also. This is an important lesson from the top sports. Train harder, but also recover harder. And top athletes understand this one. And this is a physical sinus, also a mental. When we are under pressure, mentally, we also have to recover. We have to charge our mental battery. So this is how it works. Our body works. What do we do, normal people? in our daily lives, in our daily busy business lives. Working hard, deadlines, responsibilities, expectations, work life, whoa, whoa, balance. We know how to push the boundaries, actually, we just normal people. What do we do with our recovery? Well, I will tell you. We come home late after a working day, and we should cook a nice meal and the avocados, and the quinoas, and the biological chicken. We're all there is lying there in your kitchen, but you don't want to cook in half an hour. Now you're going to call homedeliver.nl or go to the big yellow M to grab a nice fast hamburger. It's easy, it's fast, it tastes good. And we should do a running this evening or a physical workout. 
when you're way too tired, you work too hard, you're way too tired to do your exercises. So instead, you're going to sit on the couch, or you're going, you're going to lay on the sofa, and you have yourself a nice cold glass of beer, or a good glass of wine, because you deserved it, you worked very hard, and then you think 10 o'clock in the evening, oh, I have to respond to that email. So uh, you open up the laptop, and you're going to work, and before you know it, it's 12 o'clock, and you'll be wasting an important part of our sleep. And this is, I see too many people nodding. <laughs> too many people recognize this situation. This is how we disrespect the recovery. So what can we learn from top sports and use in our daily lives? We know how to push the boundaries, but have a little bit more attention for our recovery. We have to recover after putting the effort. Okay, most relevant question now is how? How? How do we recover? Well, there are seven ways to recover. Seven ways to recover. Physically, physically mentally, emotionally. Most important one is sleep. Sleep. 80% of our recovery we get from sleep. Physical recovery, mental, emotional recovery. Sleep. Sleep eight hours a night, and we're waking up like a tiger. Okay, nutrition, for energy, for recovery, eat some healthy food, five times a day. Yeah, breakfast, lunch, dinner, two healthy snack moments. Do some sports, like this, you know, a few times a week, especially for the mental, emotional recovery. It's the most important mental recovery, doing sports, doing exercises. Relax, we have to relax every now and then. Take a massage or take a bath or something, something you like to relax. Mindfulness. Social contacts, support, family and friends, colleagues. My, my wife was uh, supporting me when I was a gymnast, but she's still supporting me. Here she is, hi, Lisa. Still supporting me because I have to perform. I want to be in Olympic shape today also. Humor, we have to laugh, putting things in perspective, very important. Dopamines, very good recovery, mental, emotional. Last but not least, me time. We, all, we, we usually ignore this one in business. Top athletes don't know how to have some me time, me first, always. But we ignore me time a little bit too much. So expectations and responsibilities, now some me time also during a week. One hour me time, doing something you like, your hobby, your passion, it's important. It's important to get in Olympic shape. So what can we learn? We know how to push the boundaries. Find a balance in your efforts and your recovery. And that's one big step forward to getting your Olympic shape. And I will finish with this question. How do you get your own Olympic shape? I'm going to recover now. Thank you.